Praise the Lord. Are you there? I said, Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be here tonight for a combined Bible study? I pray the Lord will multiply joy and happiness in your life in Jesus' name. You'll be as happy as I am. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless your name for a Bible study with your people tonight. And we're asking, Lord, that you reach our lives in the study of your word in Jesus' name. We pray the study will not just pass through our head, it will get to our hearts. It will not just be in the mind, it will be in our spirit. And we'll be doers of the word in Jesus' name. The grace to be obedient to your word. Your grant to every one of us tonight in Jesus' name. As we pray for ourselves who are here, we pray for all our members and all those who are studying with us in all the locations all over Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. We're asking, Lord, that we reach every life for the word of God tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church give a good, better. Amen. Thank you very much. We are studying tonight from John chapter 16. And in John chapter 16, we're reading from verse 12. John 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but she cannot bear them now. Have be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. As we look at the word of God tonight, actually we're studying on to all through to verse 22. I'm starting with those verses. Christ's declaration must have taken the disciples by surprise. You understand it's been with them for about three and a half years and it's been teaching them and it's been exposing to them the things of the kingdom and they thought by this time now they had heard like everything they had learned everything that christ brought from heaven surprisingly now at the last week of his fellowship with them and abiding and presence of them he told them in verse 12 i have yet many things to say unto you how about that you've been with us for three and a half years and you've taught us quite a lot of things and when we thought we're at the end of the syllabus at the end of the of the studies it's like you're saying that we're just at the beginning he said yes because ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the holy ghost the holy spirit the spirit of truth has come it will guide you into all truth because he will not speak of himself he will not speak from his own mind he will not speak of his own heart of his own accord but what he hears from heaven what he hears from me christ what he hears from the Father, that he will speak unto you, and he will show you things to come. As he told them, teaching them at this time, that there were yet many things that they were still to learn, still to be taught. You think about it yourself. And you think about the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you see what the disciples had learned already. The disciples already knew more than the Pharisees knew because he told them, It's you that has given the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. Not only that, they had known all these mysteries of the kingdom, how to enter the kingdom, how to remain in the kingdom, how to manifest the power of the kingdom, how to have the authority of the kingdom, and then the final kingdom, the coming kingdom, the eschatological kingdom, the kingdom to come. They had learned about all that, and yet he said, that's not all. 
And these people had even known and heard more than the prophets of the Old Testament. In fact, he told them that you already know more than the prophets and the kings of the Old Testament. And they had had the voice of the Father from heaven, giving them a confirmation saying, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him. At this time now, they had even learned some interpretations of the Old Testament that they never knew before. And the Old Testament, like the Psalms, like the prophets, I say, like Jerusalem, Jeremiah, like Deuteronomy, all those things came alive to them as Jesus Christ interpreted the Old Testament to them like no scribe could ever interpret. And yet, with all that is said, there's still many things you don't know. And I'm still going to send the Holy Ghost to you so that it will give you the right thing and the final thing. Now let's look at, you know, all that I'm telling you now. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 11, it says, He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given and yet even though they knew the mysteries of the kingdom he said there's still many things you need to know look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says but blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear the things those things which ye hear and have not heard them he said you have heard more than the prophets of old more than the kings of old and yet there's still more you need to know look at this in uh, this same chapter i'm reading from verse 51 in verse 51 it says jesus says unto them have ye understood all these things and they say unto him yes lord yea lord then said he unto them therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old he told them quite a lot of things and he related a lot of parables unto them and he said do you understand they said yes we do yes we do we're coming to luke chapter 10 in Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 21. Luke chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 21. I want to see what they already knew. After that, we're now going to see what he was telling them. I have yet many, many things to say unto you. And I've not told you because you couldn't bear them. But he, when he, the Holy Ghost, is come, he will teach you all things. He'll guide into all truth and he'll bring to your remembrance the things I've told you. Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 21. It says, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father. For so it seemed good on in thy sight. He said, you hid them from the wise people of the world and from the prudent people of the world, from the powerful people of the world, from people of rank and people of position in the world, and you have revealed them unto babes. These people, these disciples knew more than the wise men of the world. And then it says in verse 22, all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knows who the son is but the father and who the father is but the son and to and he to whom the son will reveal him and the lord jesus will be revealing the father unto them and he revealed the nature of the Father, the power of the Father, the kingdom of the Father, the love of the Father unto them. And yet with all that revelation, 
And with all the things that learned and known, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but she cannot bear them. Now look at verse 23. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. He said, you need to appreciate the position you have. You need to appreciate the knowledge you have. You need to appreciate the revelation you are getting. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see, and I'm not seeing them. The things you seen. Many kings and many prophets have desired to see them, and I'm not seeing them. And to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. That's the reason. They must have been surprised. We're coming back to John chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you. Yet many things to teach you. Yet many things to reveal unto you. Yet many things to bring from heaven and then make known unto you. But... You cannot bear them now. How be it? You know this? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Everything you need to learn, revelation from heaven, the Holy Ghost will bring. And it says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak for he will show you things to come. In verse 14, it shall glorify me as he reveals the truth unto you. Things you never heard and things you have not known. It will glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine. I will show each unto you. Tonight we're looking at uh, those verses all through to verse 22. And the topic is Christ's fuller revelation through the Holy Spirit. Christ's fuller revelation. He's giving them some revelation. He's taught them some mysteries of the kingdom. It's revealed the knowledge of heaven unto them. But now it says the Holy Ghost is coming. And when the Holy Ghost comes, it will make the knowledge you have, the revelation you have, the understanding you have, it will make it full. Christ's fuller revelation through the Holy Spirit. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the foundational teaching of the Savior. He gave them the foundation. He was going to build on that foundation. Christ laid the foundation, the foundation of knowledge, the foundation of truth, the foundation of revelation. He gave them that revelation, the foundation of his doctrine, the foundation of his teaching, the foundational teaching of the Savior. Point number two is fuller truth, is fuller teaching, is fuller doctrine. Is fuller revelation, is fuller truth through the Holy Spirit. The truth still coming to them, and the revelation still coming to them through the Holy Spirit. The fuller truth through the Holy Spirit. Point number three the frustrating thoughts of temporary separation. It was telling them when we read the verses, you understand, it was going away. And because he said it was going away, sorrow filled their hearts. And in fact, it said, because I revealed to you, I'm leaving you. I'm going to the Father. That's where he came from. And I'm going to heaven. He should have been glad, happy with me that I'm going back to the Father. But now you are sorrowful. The frustrating thoughts of temporary separation. We're coming to point number one. What's my point number one there? Say it out aloud. The foundational teaching of the Savior. Come back to John chapter 16. We're reading from verse 12. John 16 verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you. 
but she cannot bear them now. Before we can unravel, interpret, explain that verse, we need to go back to what he had taught them already, what he knew already, what were the foundational teachings of the Savior he already exposed to them. Because you understand that Jesus Christ has been teaching them, is the teacher, is the master, is the instructor, is the guide, is the personification of the truth. And he said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Foundational experiences and foundational teachings he had given them. Look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 47. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, here is my teaching, here is my doctrine, here is my instruction, here is my truth that I bring from heaven and doeth them. I will show you whom he is like. It's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Laid the foundation on a rock. He had told them things that were foundational. What are they? He told them about repentance. That's foundational. He told them about believing on him. Except you believe on him, you don't have life. That's foundational. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's a foundational. So that whosoever will believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is foundational. He said, all that hear that and you repent, all that hear that and they believe, all that hear that and they come to me, they build on the foundation. And it says, when the flood arose and the stream that uh, beat vehemently upon that house could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Look at verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not, he hears about repentance. He doesn't repent. He hears about faith in Christ. He doesn't have faith in Christ. He hears about coming to Christ. That is, all you that labor and heavy laden, come unto me. I will give you rest. And it doesn't come. It says, he that heareth and doeth not. It's like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great he had told them he had revealed to them foundational truth what are the foundational truths he had taught them before this time look at luke chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 3 luke chapter 13 verse 3 i tell you nay but except she repent he shall not likewise perish he revealed to them there is repentance and repentance is necessary and it is necessary for everyone look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says i tell you nay but except she repent he shall not likewise perish but he said that's not the end of knowledge that's not the epitome of a revelation. That's not the zenith. That's not the peak. There's still many other things you need to know after you have known about repentance. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, it says, Then one uh, said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you i know you're not from whence ye are and then ye shall begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not. When ye are, depart from me, 
all ye that work iniquity. You know what he was uh, telling them? He told them the necessity of repentance, indispensability of repentance, and the very important essential sin uh, that they must repent, that come into his presence, eating uh, in his uh, conference and retreat, and he providing or multiplying food for them. That's not enough. There must be repentance. And the same thing is telling you, you'll be coming to the Bible study, praise the Lord, you are coming. You'll be coming to the real praise the Lord, you are coming. You'll be coming to the meetings, praise the Lord, you are coming. Keep on coming. But the question is, have you repented? Because if the trumpet sounds, and if Christ comes, if the saints are taken away, and then you have not repented that I have been coming, I have been coming, that's not enough, that's not enough. You must give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. There must be repentance. In fact, it says in John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see that Jesus Christ had taught them about the new birth, about becoming a new creature, all things passing away, all things becoming new. And yet, on top of that, after teaching repentance, on top of that, after teaching of faith in Christ, on top of that, after teaching being born again, he said, there's still many things I've not told you. And when the Holy Ghost has come, it will teach you all things. Do you know there are some uh, believers, they say, I'm born again, I'm born again. They think that is all. You're talking to them, you're inviting them. Uh, there's a Bible study, uh, or you say there is revival, or you say there is something, you know, we have a meeting, why don't you come along? They say, thank you very much for inviting me, I appreciate that. But you know what? I'm born again, I'm born again. Their understanding is once you are born again, that's all. What else do I need? Jesus said, even after they were born again, and he said, rejoice because your names are written in the book of life in heaven. He said, even after that, I still have many things to tell you and to teach you. Look at verse 5 here. In verse 5, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God I'm coming back to Matthew in Matthew chapter 5 Matthew chapter 5 uh, you're wondering what did these people know what have they heard already how we see it is just telling them now that um, I have many things to say unto you didn't they know already all those many things? Well, there are a lot of things they knew, but they had not known everything. Matthew chapter 5, look at verse 3. This is what he had taught them already. This is what they knew already. This is what they had learned already. This is the deposit of knowledge, revelation, truth they already had. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He told them how to get to the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they which mourn, they mourn for their sins. They are sorrowful for their sins. They regret about their sins. They turn away from their sins, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. These are people that have got the grace of God. They have been born again. They became humble. They became meek. They became gentle. They became tender. And yet, they still had many, many things to learn. You know, you look at a person, and the person, by the grace of God, is born again. The person is meek. The person is gentle. The person is loving. And yet, Jesus said, don't think you've got to the end. Don't think there's nothing else to learn. Look at verse 5. It says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It says in verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. After knowing and after learning all that, Jesus said, don't go away yet. You're saved. Don't go away yet. 
You purify in your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, sanctified and made holy. Don't go away yet. You say that yet many things I need to reveal unto you. That even some of them have been to the Mount of Transfiguration. And when they got to the Mount of Transfiguration, they heard the very voice of the Lord of God from heaven. Look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his image was white as the light. Hold on. You see, there are people, once they see, they say, you know what? I want to tell you something. I hope you'll believe this. I saw Jesus Christ. Not like, you know, he was walking in Galilee and Nazareth. I saw him glorified. I saw him transfigured. I saw him, it was kind of a glowing with the light of heaven. In fact, at that time, I even saw some other people who have died and they came out and they were discussing with Jesus. And then I had the voice of the Almighty God. After they give you the testimonies like that, you see, can I invite you to come along with us to the Bible study? And he says, you didn't understand my testimony. You didn't hear what I was telling you. You didn't hear the glory that I saw. They think that because of that revelation, they think because of that glory, they think because of what they had seen or what they had, they don't need the teaching of the word of God anymore. Jesus said to these same people, he says, I have many things, not just a few things, not just some little isolated things. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. But he, when he, the Holy Ghost is come, he will teach you all things. Look at uh, verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, while he yet spake. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. You see, after that encounter, the Lord Jesus still said, Don't think you know it all. Don't think you've got it all. Don't think you've learned it all. I have yet many things to say unto you. We're coming to John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 11. John chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You see, that's forgiveness right there. There's no condemnation now. Because your sins are taken away. Your guilt is taken away. Your condemnation is gone. And now I give you the grace and I give you the power to go and sin no more. And you know, it's good to have the victory over sin. And victory over all the works of the flesh. But you see the problem with some people because they know they are saved. They know they are truly born again. And by the grace of God, they are living the victorious life. They say, you know, if I really, let's say I'm weak, I'll be attending Bible study. Let's say I'm not sure of myself, I'll be attending Bible study. Let's say I didn't have, you know, the victory that I have now, I'll be running to the Bible. But, but you know what? I thank God. I praise the Lord. There's no condemnation in my heart. I'm free. I'm victorious. I'm conquering. What Jesus said, go and sin no more. That's my experience every day. My friends, look at what Jesus was telling them. After giving them the victory. After giving them the life of righteousness. 
after giving them the assurance they were on their way to heaven in fact they said believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you with that assurance he gave them he still said there are still many things that I need to reveal to you and you must have them as the Holy Ghost comes. Look at verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. These were the people when Jesus said, Will you also go away? But Peter said, For the rest of the people, to whom shall we go? We we'll trust you. We we'll believe in you. You have the word of life eternal, everlasting life. And Jesus said, have I not chosen you twelve and one of you as a backsliding? You see, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet he said, many things I have that I'm still going to teach you through the Spirit. But you cannot bear them now. Look at chapter 8 of John, verse 30. Chapter 8 of John, I'm reading here from verse 30. It says in verse 30, as he speak this words, many believed on him. Understand? Believing on him, that's not the end of the road. Believing on him, that's not the end of revelation. Believing on him, that's not the end of instruction. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free the lord will make you free his truth will make you free but you know the point we're making after they had believed on him and after these have continued with him these were not people that you know were not dependable and they were in and out sometimes there sometimes no they were always there always with him they had continued with him and yet with all that he said you know what you don't know everything yet and you still need to learn look at luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 28 Luke chapter 22, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my trials, in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. They had continued for the Lord. These were not backsliders. These were not, you know, people undependable. These were not weak people, falling and rising, falling and rising. These were steadfast people. And these were obedient people. These were faithful people. And yet he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. I said he will teach you all things. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. They had also known about the resurrection and about the life to come. In John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life somebody there said amen. amen then look at verse 28 marvel not at this for the hour is coming the, the which all that are dead in their graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation think about that they had heard about the resurrection and about the kingdom after the resurrection and yet with all that knowledge of the resurrection with all that knowledge from the point of repentance on to the point of resurrection and the rapture is still said uh-huh hold on 
Many things you still need to know. You know, some people, once they have known their accounting, I know about repentance, their accounting, I know about conversion, their accounting, I know about salvation, their accounting, I know about forgiveness, their accounting, I know about prayer. They are taught them about prayer, you know. I know about faith, and I know about moving mountains. They are taught them about all that. And yet, after knowing all that, he said, still many things I've not told you. Hold on, hold on. And keep coming and wait until the Holy Ghost will come. They had known about humility. He had told them, they that exalt themselves will be abased. And those that humble themselves will be exalted. They had learned about holiness without hypocrisy. And yet, because he condemned hypocrisy in every way. And he told them, if somebody is hypocrite, how can you escape hellfire? They had known about marriage, you understand? When he said, God made them male and female, and they became two, joined together. And what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They had known about evangelism. Say ye not that the year to four months, and then comes the harvest, I send you forth to go and reap. We are told him about fruitfulness that after you go out and find that's why I chose you, that you will go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain you are told them about family life how you need to forgive each other in fact he told them about restitution that when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that someone has sought against you your wife has something against your husband has something against you go back and reconcile with your brother with your sister your wife your husband and then come back and offer the gift i'm saying they already knew quite a lot of things and some people once they know all that and they say praise the lord i'm living by the knowledge he had given me i'm living by the revelation he had given me they think that is all but he said i have yet many things to say unto you as you look at your personal life as you look at your knowledge as you look at the revelations you have got as you look at the assurance of god you are asking yourself what next what next that's what the lord is telling us about as you think about these people they knew about healing they knew about deliverance and they knew about victory over the powers of darkness behold i give unto you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you they knew about restoration from backsliding he gave them the parable of the prodigal son and he spoke about the restoration they knew about perseverance enduring to the end he says that the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved already ready to you they knew about resurrection they knew about the great tribulation if you look at matthew come back to matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 i'm reading here from verse 21 matthew chapter 24 and i'm reading from verse 21 he told them in verse 21 he said for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since at the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be that known about the desolation that will come at that time he referred to the book of daniel they knew about the antichrist they knew about the second coming and they knew about heaven they knew about hell they knew about the reward of the saints forever they knew about the punishments of sinners forever who die in sin and yet with all that knowledge he told them there's still many things you need to know but you cannot bear them now i pray that will not be dull of hearing in jesus name i will not be tired of learning in jesus name and the church said amen i go to point number two now we're coming to john we're coming to john chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 12 all through to verse 15. you know what the lord jesus christ is telling them the lord jesus is saying with all that we have known with all that we have learned with all that we have heard and with all the revelations he has given unto us from repentance to resurrection and to the rapture he says there's still many things he wants to tell us there's still many things he wants to reveal to us that when the spirit has come then the spirit will reveal everything to us and i pray that you'll be available for that revelation 
I said you'll be available for that revelation. And let, let's look at it now. We're looking at uh, John chapter 16 verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them. Now, look at verse 13. How be it? How be it? You're still going to learn. You're still going to know. You're still going to have the revelation. It says, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into, tell me, tell me out aloud it all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come and then in verse 14 it says he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show each unto you it says everything is still coming from me i'm in heaven the holy ghost is here it's going to abide with you forever and then i'll be passing each unto him and he shall receive of mine and then he'll transmit it unto you and then he tells us in verse 15 all things that the father has a mine therefore said i that he shall take up mine and show it unto you point number two the fuller truth through the holy spirit the fuller truth through the Holy Spirit. Remember the title of the Holy Spirit. Remember the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Remember the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's important for you to be saved. Important for you to be sanctified. Important for you to be baptized and filled and overwhelmed and enveloped and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Because if you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you are saved. Wonderful. You are sanctified. Wonderful. There are many, many things you will not know. There are many, many things that will not be revealed unto you. But when the Spirit is come, when the Holy Ghost is come, it will guide you into all truth. Let's look at his title, his ministry, and his work. We're looking at John chapter 14, verse 16, verse 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that ye may abide with you for how long? Forever. Even the spirit of truth. You see that? The spirit of truth. He knows the truth. He has the truth. He delights in the truth. He rejoices in the truth. He teaches the truth. He reveals the truth. He instructs in the truth. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but she know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26 of chapter 14, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Look at this. He shall teach you. How many things? All things. He shall teach you all things. That is beyond what you have known. Above what you have known. Building on what you have known. The things that still remain. The things that are still lacking. The things that uh, makes your life not complete yet. Because you don't have them. Because they are not revealed unto you. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. There are times you have even known some things. And those things you have known, you are forgetting. They are sleeping away from you. And you are not able to make use of them. It's like when you need them, you cannot find them. When you need them, you don't even remember. But the Holy Ghost comes. It takes all the things you learned in the past. The former knowledge, the former revelation, and the former truth that you know. That will make you solid. That will make you sound. That will make you steadfast. That will make you dependable. That will make you trustworthy. The things you need to remember. It brings everything to your remembrance. And then all other things you need need to know he brings them to you too and then he says and whatsoever i have said unto you and we're looking at first corinthians chapter 2 first corinthians chapter 2 when it says the holy spirit himself will guide you into all truth will teach you all things and will bring all things to your remembrance what are the things they will do look at uh, chapter 2 of first corinthians first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 but as it is written i has not seen 
nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Look up here for a moment. You know, there are times uh, you are wondering, okay, I'm a believer. Okay, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. What's, what's the result? What's the profit? What's the reward? What am I going to have as I'm born again? And sometimes you are blank. You don't know what you're going to have. And you say, am I just born again for nothing? Am I born again in vain? What if at the end of the day, all this I'm thinking about now, I go to Bible study, I go to church, I've repented, I make restitution, I'm living a righteous life. What if at the end of the day, nothing comes out of it? It is the Holy Spirit that will remind you that this is the benefit, this is the gain. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what have not entered into the heart of man, it is the Holy Spirit that will bring everything to remembrance. Look at verse 10, look at verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by who? I said by who? By his Spirit. Look at this. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Underline that. The deep things of God. Those are the things that the Lord said. Those deep things, you don't know them yet. You're saved. You need to know those deep things. You're sanctified. You need to know those deep things. And then the Holy Ghost comes. He fills you. He saturates you. He baptizes you. It takes over your life and it begins to shine forth in your life, revealing things to you you couldn't have known. And then we come to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world. It says, according to the will of God, a father and look at uh, verse 11 in verse 11 but i certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for i neither received it of man neither was i taught it but by the revelation of jesus christ you see paul the apostle he benefited from the coming of the holy ghost it was advantageous for him it was expedient for him. It was something that made him to advance in the knowledge of scripture, in the knowledge of revelation, in the knowledge of the great things, the mighty things, the good things the Lord has done at Calvary. And it said, it wasn't revealed to me by man, by Peter, by James, by John, but I received it by revelation, by revelation from the Lord. In fact, it tells us, uh, come to a second Corinthians chapter 12, second Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading here from verse 7, second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. It says, unless I shall be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Abundance of revelations. That's what the Spirit of God did. That's what the Spirit of the Lord gave in his life. Saved, that's good. Sanctified, that's good. But I have yet many things to say unto you. And you cannot bear them yet deep revelations of heaven to reveal unto you abundance of revelation to reveal unto you like a deed unto Paul the apostle and he says but you don't you cannot have that yet we're coming to first Thessalonians chapter 4 in first Thessalonians chapter 4 I read from verse 13 but I will not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God 
bring with him for this was say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent shall not proceed shall not hinder them that are asleep for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air so shall we ever be with the lord wherefore comfort one another with these words you see that's the rapture but the details of the rapture and the explanation of the rapture and the full step by step of the rapture it was not known to you know the disciples but now the holy ghost had come and the holy ghost taught them and revealed to them all these details look at chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that i write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but she brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunk in, are drunk in, in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation for god has not appointed us unto to us but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ you see that all the details about the coming of the lord he itemized everything how did he know that because of the holy spirit that now overwhelmed his life and brought revelations that they didn't know all those details at the beginning jesus said i have yet many things to say unto you when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth i pray he will guide you he will teach you he will instruct you looks like some people they are tired yeah. and it will show you things to come in jesus name yeah. uh, just for you to understand uh, just so that it gets talk in your in your heart number one the deep things of god the deep things of god that's part of what jesus said the holy ghost will teach the Holy Ghost will reveal when he comes the deep things of God. Number two, the abundance of revelations. Abundance of revelation. So that the disciple, the apostle, the preacher, the pastor, the leader will not be in darkness. Will not what, what, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? What am I going to teach? What am I going to instruct? You'll not be in ignorance because the Holy Ghost will so overwhelm you, will so saturate you, and he will give you abundance of revelations number three the unsearchable riches of christ look at ephesians chapter three ephesians chapter three i'm reading from verse eight ephesians chapter three verse eight unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ those are the things the things you could not find out with your own mind the things you could not find out with your own intellect the things you cannot find out in an encyclopedia you cannot find out in a dictionary but it reveals to you the unsearchable riches of christ and to make all men see what is the fellow and the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ the things that were hidden 
from the beginning of the world that nobody knew the holy ghost now begins to reveal number four gentile salvation without jewish religion gentile salvation without jewish religion you know what those disciples thought before jesus left if anybody is going to get saved he'll become a jew he'll be circumcised he'll keep the law of moses and then he can have salvation that's what they thought that's why when peter went to the house of cornelius all the other disciples were surprised how could you do that those who are gentiles that's part of the deep things the lord wanted to reveal to them but they could not bear it at that time acts of the apostles chapter 11 acts chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 2 in verse 2 it says and when peter was come up to jerusalem they that were the circumcision a contended with him saying that wentest in to men uncircumcised and did each was there and did each was, they accused him what did he say look at verse 12 it said and the spirit bade me go it's the spirit that's part of the spirit what the spirit came to reveal ordinarily i wouldn't have done that ordinarily i wouldn't have gone there but the spirit bid me go look at that verse 12 of them nothing doubting moreover these six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house that's what the holy spirit did look at verse 15 it says in verse 15 and as i began to speak the holy ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning and because of that i saw that this is the according of the lord this is the teaching of the lord this is the revelation of the lord this is what the lord said i have yet many things to reveal unto you many things to instruct you and many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now and after the holy ghost came they were able to bear that number one the deep things of god reveals number two the abundance of revelations he gives number three the unsearchable riches of christ number four gentle salvation without jewish religion number five oneness of converted jews and gentiles think about that the disciples of jesus never knew never thought that a converted jew and a converted gentile would be equal would be the same but it was the revelation of the spirit when the spirit came look at ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 14 for he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us between us jews and between us gentiles having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace that he might reconcile both jews and gentiles unto god in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace unto you which were afar off and to them which were night for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father you see that's what uh, the holy ghost came to convince them about that now gentiles and jews at the same when they are converted in the sight of the lord there's something more number six gentle exaltation and the jews fall and blindness the lord couldn't have told them that but now the holy ghost was revealing that the gentile was going to be exalted and the jews by unbelief they were going to fall and are going to have spiritual blindness in romans chapter 11 
Romans chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 13. Romans chapter 11, we're reading from verse 13. The things the Holy Ghost came to reveal unto them. The things the Holy Ghost came to teach them. After the Holy Ghost had come upon them, after the Holy Ghost had saturated them, after the Holy Ghost had baptized them, after the Holy Ghost had enveloped them, after the Holy Ghost took full residence in their hearts. And I was leading them and teaching them and instructing them to know what they ought to know what they couldn't have known in any other way in verse 13 this is what it says for i speak to you gentiles in as much as i am the apostle of the gentiles i magnify mine office look at verse 15 for ye the casting away of them of the jews be the reconciling of the world what shall the receiving of them be but live from the day look at verse 25 in verse 25 it tells us for i would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery lest ye should be wise in your own conceit the blindness in part is happened unto israel blindness in part is happened unto israel until the fullness of the gentiles become in and then number seven the greatest revelation the greatest prophecy since the foundation of the world the greatest revelation the greatest prophecy since the beginning of the world it was to come how did that come the whole book of revelation from chapter 1 to chapter 22 that details everything about the period of the church that details everything about the minute details of the great revelation and then the marriage supper of the lamb and then the new heaven and the new earth and then the white throne the judgment and the glorious eternity where all tears are wiped away and when all sorrows are taken away all that revelation coming through the spirit and that's why jesus said i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth has come it will guide you into all truth i pray we'll receive the power of the holy ghost the revelation of the holy ghost and the partnership of the holy ghost in our lives in jesus name while the fuller revelation had, had been made known by the Spirit, it will be that uh, the Lord will bring uh, his teaching to the full. And then there will be the remembrance of everything we have learned before. And it will be profitable in every life. We are coming back to John chapter 16. And I'm coming to point number three now. John chapter 16. And we are reading from verse 16. John chapter 16 reading from verse 16 here we're talking about the frustrating thoughts of temporary separation the lord was going to be separated from them temporarily and because of that temporary separation that jesus was going to heaven even though he told them i'm going there to represent you i'm going there to stand for you i'm going there to prepare a place for you that separation still brought sorrow in their heart in john chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 16 a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. And you need to understand that. A little while, you shall not see me. What does that mean? He'll go to the cross. He'll be killed at the cross of Calvary because of the sins of the whole of humanity. He'll be buried. They'll not see him. And then the third day, he will rise again. He will appear unto them. And then in a little while, you will see me. You'll not see me. I'm going to die for the sins of the world. You'll not see me, I'll be buried. You'll not see me, I'll be in the grave for those three days. And you will see me again. And your heart will rejoice because at, after the resurrection, I will appear, I will come unto you. Look at verse 17. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he says unto us a little while? And ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this? 
that he says a little while we cannot tell what he says they need to understand he will go away because of the death and because of the crucifixion and because of the burial they will not see him and then when he rises again when he rises from the dead and he comes to appear to them and he's going to give them any infallible proofs and he's going to appear to them all those 40 days then they will rejoice because they have seen the risen lord look at verse 19 now jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them do ye inquire among yourselves of that i said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me are you sorrowful because of that come to john chapter 7 verse 33 john chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 33 john 7 verse 33 this is not the first time you'll say that john 7 verse 33 then said jesus unto them yet a little while am i with you and then i go unto him that sent me look at chapter 13 john chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 33 john 13 verse 33 little children talking to his own disciples little children talking to the little flock little children yet a little while i am with you ye shall seek me and as i said unto the jews whither i go ye cannot come so now i say unto you he was telling them that he was uh, going away come to john chapter 16 reading from verse 4 john 16 verse 4 but these things have i told you that when the time shall come ye may remember that i told you of them and these things i said not unto you at the beginning because i was with you but now i go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whither goest thou but because i have said these things unto you sorrow has filled your heart they were sorrowful because he said he was going away and they were not going to see him they were not thinking about the other aspect and the other part of the sentence yet i will come and i will see you and you will see me and your sorrow will be turned unto joy your sorrow will turn to joy come back to john chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 20 john chapter 16 verse 20 very late very late i say unto you very late very late i say unto you that ye shall weep and lament and the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy i thought somebody there will say amen Verse 21, a woman, when she is in travail in labor, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish, the pain, the travail, for joy that a man is born into the world. We know that. And now Jesus mixes up that. And in verse 22, he says, And ye now therefore have sorrow, and I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. He was talking about his resurrection, that he was going away, yes, but there was going to be resurrection. And when that resurrection happens, it will appear to them. And when he appears to them, the joy will be full. Look at John chapter 20, John chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 19. It says in verse 19, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and he stood in the midst and says unto them, Somebody tell me, 
peace be unto you. Resurrection had taken place. He came out of the grave. The stones were rolled away and in power, power of resurrection, he came out of the grave. And when he had so said, in verse 20, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples, what's the word there? glad when they saw the Lord. That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, you're sorrowful now because I said I'm going away. I'll die. I'll be buried. Then I will rise again and then I will see you and your sorrow shall turn to joy. Look at verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me even so send I you. And when he had said this a breeze on them and said unto them receive ye the holy ghost receive ye the holy ghost who are coming to luke chapter 24 in luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 36 luke chapter 24 reading from verse 36 it says in verse 36 and as they thus speak jesus himself stood in the midst of them and says unto them peace be unto thee that's exactly what he had said he was going away and because he was going away they'll be sorrowful because he was going away they'll be sad but he said i'll see you again and you'll see me again and your sorrow shall be turned unto joy and then he tells us in verse 39 behold my hands and my feet that it is i myself handle me and see for his spirit has not a flesh and bones as she see me have and when he had thus spoken he showed them his signs and his feet and while they yet believed not for joy unbelievable this is wonderful he said so he was going away and he said so he was coming back and now he's risen from the dead and it they had joy and they wondered and he said unto them have ye here any meat look at verse 51 and it came to pass while he blessed them he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, tell me, with great joy, their sorrow had turned unto joy. And the same thing happens to us when you have had a problem and it appeared that Christ is far away and then the Holy Ghost comes and he reveals Christ unto you and then you can see him. He solves your problem. He moves away your mountain and all the sorrow is turned unto joy. I pray that will be your experience. I said that will be your experience. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. It says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection that gave them joy, that gave them gladness, that gave them happiness, that same resurrection works in our life. He quickens us. He revives us. He brings us to new life. And he says to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Ye greatly rejoice. Somebody there tonight, you greatly rejoice. The resurrection power of Christ will work in your life. And you will rejoice in Jesus' name. It says, do now, do now, for a season, if need be, and heaviness, through manifold temptations, trials, or trouble, that the trial of your faith will be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. It will appear. 
he will come again and he says whom have you not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believe him ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory even though christ told the disciples of the advantage and of the expediency of his going away is leaving them cause them sorrow in their hearts that temporary separation brought sorrow that seemingly was unbearable they were sorrowful the lord assured them that they will soon see him after his resurrection and their sorrow will be turned into joy the same thing with us we will see the lord i said we will see the lord and then when we see the lord great will be our joy whatever we're going through now whatever sorrow whatever trauma whatever trouble whatever trial we're going through now jesus is coming again and when he comes again great will be our joy i will see him i will see him Look at Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall be with them, and they will be their God. And God shall wipe away, and God shall wipe away, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, and neither shall there be any more pain. The former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He'll make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh. You see there? He that overcometh. What is he? You are going to overcome. You'll overcome in your life in Jesus' name. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. We know today what the Lord has revealed to us, that of all the things we have learned, there's still many things for us to learn, and when the Holy Ghost comes in, in his fullness, when the Holy Ghost comes in, in a baptismal measure, he will reveal more of God, more of the glories of heaven, more of the treasures of heaven, more of the deep things of God, he will reveal unto us. If you are saved, praise the Lord, move on and be sanctified. If you are sanctified, praise the Lord, move on and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you are baptized, the Holy Ghost, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, those deep revelations and the bonus revelation and everything you said, you will do when you come, do it in my life. A new life will begin today. A new chapter will begin today. A new phase of your Christian life will begin today. And if there's any sorrow there, if there's any sadness there, as the Holy Ghost moves in and as the resurrection power of Jesus comes to you today, he'll roll all the sadness away. He'll roll all the sorrow away. And great will be your joy in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Rise up and tell the Lord, rise up and tell the Lord everything you've learned today. Bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be a recipient. I want to be a partaker. I want to have the benefit of everything you have revealed today. He will do it in your life. He'll do it in your life. He'll do it in your life. If you will call upon the Lord, you see what we have learned today. Let the benefit of what we have learned come in your life and be revealed in your life. Say, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here. Let the Holy Ghost take over from my, in my life. And let this new revelation, deep revelation, deep things of God, let them come in my life, even from today, and turn every sorrow into joy in my life.